Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and this is the third video in this series of five videos for the parents of children who have always struggled with their maths, who want to sort them out. The first video was about understanding and identifying any physical barriers your child might be facing to learning maths and here's a link to that video there. The second video was about understanding their needs with the numbers to 10 and in this video we're going to be looking at the numbers to 20 and in particular we're going to be looking at two big ideas the important structures of the numbers to 20 that some children get and some children don't get and we need to check whether your child has properly understood them and we need to intervene if they haven't so the first big idea is that your child needs to be able to identify the numbers to 20 when they are structured as fives and ones. It's something adults can do and some children don't learn young enough and then their maths learning goes wrong. So let's look at what that means in practice. Here's a quick exercise for you. How many lines are there here? Have you managed to count them? You've had quite a while. It's tricky, isn't it? What about here? Bet you managed to count them much quicker. And that's because you understand this structure of numbers when they're grouped in fives and the extra ones. For your interest, there were 16 lines here and 17 here, but I bet you counted those quicker. Now, if a child is struggling with that structure, then they're having to count those lines individually and their brain is having to work much harder than if they had learnt that structure. Now, the same structure of number occurs in many places, but most importantly, it's also there in your fingers and your toes. And this is particularly important for children because while Politicians in education can decide to take apparatus away from them in their tests when they're really still very young and they need apparatus. No politician has yet decided to take away their fingers and their toes. Unfortunately, they work perfectly. So let's see the numbers to 20 in fingers and toes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Notice that isn't six. Six is that. It's a full set of five and the ones. And that's how this structure works. But what do we do when we get to the number 11? Well, it's much easier for you because you can just put your hands near your feet. But because I'm working with video, I need to do this. So at the point where we get to the number 10, we flash the 10 into our toes and then we can use our hands to show the numbers above 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And again, that's 17. That isn't 17. It's got to be a full set of five before you start the next set of five, working up through your fingers and toes. So your child needs to quickly identify a number that's shown through tallies up to the number 20. Not quite instantly, but pretty quickly. So they're not counting every single line. And they also need to be able to show you numbers with the same structure in their fingers and toes by putting their hands next to their toes for numbers 11 to 20. Lots of people talk about children having dyscalculia or maths blindness. It's where they can't be creative and confident and flexible with their maths. They're just parroting methods shown to them by other people. And it is the lack of structures like these that causes it. And this is one of the key ones that children need at this stage. I'm gonna show you some more as we go through this series. But dyscalculia is not an intrinsic thing. It's a reflection of the way that your child has learnt maths and they may not have learnt it based on these structures. So that's what we're busy fixing just now. And they are going to be fine. It does get harder when people are older because their brains become hardwired to do maths in slow ways. And even if you teach them these structures, it's really hard for them to learn to use them. 
but if your child is still primary school age you really can sort this out and it's really important that you do it because it makes such a difference to their life and to everything that they are. So seeing the numbers to 20 as groups of fives and ones is the first really important thing that you need to check that your child has got and you need to sort out if they haven't got it. Then the second big idea is using those structures to support their thinking about calculations to 20. So if we consider a calculation like 14 and 3, quite typically a child will be taught that they need to count on 3 from 14. So they're going to go 15, 16, 17. And that's very logical. And it's an important thing that children should try to do. But the children who are thinking structurally, the children who can see fives and ones, it's so much easier for them. So if we look at that calculation, we're starting with 14. There's our 14. We're adding the three which goes in as a two and a one. And we can see the answer. We can see that 17. So a child who can do that is going to be so much more confident about their answer than a child who can't. But then it becomes even more important to use that structure to support thinking about subtraction. So think about a calculation like 17 subtract 4. 17 subtract 4. How do you teach a young child to do that? Well, lots of people would tell a child to count down four from 17. So we go 16, 15, 14, 13. And that's a correct and logical way to approach the problem. And it's one of the things that children should do. But the child who can see those numbers structurally has a huge advantage. Let's just do that. 17. There's your 17. There's your 4 disappearing. There's two twos. It's gone. What's left? Well, you can see it's 13. So if you were counting down one at a time, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can see the answer. You don't have to be able to fluently count down from 20. It's great to be able to fluently count down from 20, but it's a really tricky thing to do and it's not as fast as seeing the structure and it won't give your child as much confidence as they will have if they can see and use that structure and use their fingers and toes to calculate within 20. Now there's another reason why this structure is so important when children are working with subtraction. And you start to see that if you work on a calculation like 14 subtract 13, 14 subtract 13. Now we tend to teach children that you need to count down. So to find the answer, we're telling them that you need to go 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Therefore, the answer is 1. But you don't, do you? That's not what you do. But it is what we teach children. No wonder they get confused. But if you're working in a structural way and you start with 14, here we go, 14, and you take away 13, well, you can visualise the 13 going without counting down one at a time. There's the 10 and there's the 3 of the 13. So if we take it away, we're left with one. Working in a structural way gets round that problem with subtraction and it is really important to get round it or it causes huge amounts of confusion. If you'd like to know more about that particular challenge of teaching children and how they acquire problems with subtraction at such a young age and how you get round them, here's a link to a video that I made for teachers on that topic. Don't forget to continue to play games with your child and have fun with them with number. I always recommend these games. Card games with small numbers are great. Dominoes are fantastic if you count up the pips at the end of a game and keep track on what people have scored. A child might enjoy pick up sticks. Lots of sticks are worth one or two points. Some are worth five, some are worth ten. 
and you have to achieve a certain number. It does go a bit over 20, but if your child's up for that, that's great. If your child is eight years old or over, I recommend this game, Minecraft card game, if they're into Minecraft. It's based on the same idea. It's really easy to learn and quick to play, good fun for parents and children, but it involves lots of adding up small numbers to see if they've won yet or not, which is really relevant. Also, if your child is eight or over, I give a shout out to this family game, Ingenious. It involves lots of adding up small numbers. It's perfect. And some younger children might like it too. So your takeaways from this video are that children need to be able to recognize numbers to 20 when they are shown as tallies. They also need to be able to show you the numbers to 20 with their fingers and toes. And remember, they need to fill one hand before they start another hand. If they're showing you seven, like that, that's not okay, it needs to be like that. And if you'd like to know more about teaching the numbers to 20 as fives and ones, here's a link to a video that I made for teachers about that topic, it explains more detail. And then they need to be able to use those structures to calculate within 20. And if you'd like to download some free worksheets that'll help you practice that with them and check whether they can do it or not, you can find some in the Expert Primary Maths Teaching Facebook group. If you just go to the file section, you can download those for free. And you need to carry on playing games with them. Have fun with your child. I know they'll drive you bananas at times. Let it go. Try again another day. And I hope to see you back for the fourth video in this series soon. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel. Please click on the bell that appears when you subscribe so you get notifications. If you've got a question, please post it in the comments. If you've got friends or you're part of social media groups who you think would like to know about these videos, please post a link there. I'd really appreciate it. I want to fix as many children as we possibly can during this time. That's it. You've done three videos out of five. Well done. Bye for now.